Verify ready to resume count and go for launch. OTC. OTC is go. TBC. Thank you, booster go. TTC. TTC is go. LPS. LPS is go. Mila. Mila is go. STM. STM is go. Safety console. Safety console is go. SPE. SP is go. LRD. LRD is go. SRO. SRO is go. You have a range clear to launch. And CDR. CDR is go. Heard those words, so uh, we'll get you going here shortly. Good luck, guys. Fantastic news. Thanks, Mike. Good luck. Godspeed. And have a little fun up there. You betcha. All systems are. Thanks, brother. Go for launch. Go ahead, OTC. Okay, clear caution and warning memory and verify no unexpected errors. Standing by now, here is the retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood. Okay, we have no uh, caution and warning enunciation. Stand up complete. Thanks, Charlie. The gimbling of the main engines is complete and the aerosurfaces have been verified that they are positioned for launch. The external tank now is reported to be at flight pressure. Two one two. Close and lock your visors and initiate your O2 flow and you all have a good trip. All right, everybody. Okay, everybody. Camps in. Visors down. Zero two on. Okay, let's go for ET LH2 plus Rosetta. Give me a time check around the horn. Zero two, loud and clear. Special one, loud and clear. Two, loud and clear. Three, loud and clear. And there's four, loud and clear. Yeah, loud Ninety seconds clear. away from right, launch now. Got you all the way up to thirty seconds. One, thirty seconds. Are you going to take down that right shade, or are you going to move there? Uh, the right shade, yeah. Under yeah, 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 thank you very much. You guys have all done an awesome job, you know. Hey, I'm, hey, really, I'm really proud of every one of you. You too, man. <laughs> Gotta get there. <laughs> <laughs> Sound suppression water system is now being armed, which will flow water onto the mobile launcher platform at the rate of 900,000 gallons a minute, beginning at T minus 16 seconds. The orbiter computers have positioned the vent doors to the launch configuration. Standing by now for a go for auto sequence start. T minus 33. Tap on clock will hold at T minus 31 seconds. Future failure. We've had so what? a hold. We do not know at this time what the problem is. We'll be standing by for a word, but the clock is holding at T minus 31 right. seconds to, to, stand by. to a system failure. NTD is CMPL. Go ahead. That's uh, LCC MPS 8. And uh, PV9 outboard storm drain closed power is off. It should be on. A recommendation? And uh, NTD, that we're in a no-go situation. We should have uh, our open power and we do not. Or excuse me, our, our closed power. SP. And uh, MPS, can we verify that the valve is closed? Negative. We are right now show a open position. We cannot verify the valve is closed. SP, this is MPS. Go ahead, yeah. Okay, we're going to see the reads now. We have the closed power on and hit position off. We can cycle, uh, cycle one time and try to pick up the closed position, but uh, we never pick up the closed power. Okay, and MPS, uh, we have a message that we were blocked by a prerequisite sequence from DCL-18. What has happened is the ground launch sequencer would not hand off to the orbiter's computers to complete the count because the liquid oxygen fill and drain valve was showing off when it should be on. Uh, we've been holding two minutes. SD, this is uh, CMPS. We're going to make an attempt to cursor that valve closed. Uh, we've got the pre set off. If this works, we should be in good shape. I copy. Proceed. Can work? Checklist. We have seven minutes of runtime available on the auxiliary power units. We've been holding now about two minutes and 20 seconds. And to use the CPS, uh, the valve's closed, we're good. Go. Go, go. And there's the confirmation that we have successfully okay, and, uh, you're in the recycled. You're in the pickup terminal sequence, MPS. Uh, that's a phone, so we're good. We're good shape. Okay, you have a go to proceed. Uh, DLS, pick up the count immediately. I copy. Mark. It's showtime. It 
Performance is nominal. Uh, Discovery, two engine Ben Guerrier. Everything all right? Can we help you? The two engine Ben Guerrier right. call means that uh, Discovery could reach the transatlantic abort site at Ben Guerrier on two engines if it were necessary. Copy nominal performance, two engine Ben. I don't remember lift off being quite that violent. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Velocity now 5,000 feet per second. Discovery 60 nautical miles away from the launch site. Good, okay. How's everybody doing on the mid deck? Doing fine down here. Okay. All systems continuing to perform well aboard Discovery. Velocity now is 6,200 feet per second. Downrange 100 nautical miles. The uh, environmental systems officer reports the FES is operating well. That is the flash evaporator system that provides cooling to Discovery systems. Discovery Houston, negative return, press to ATO, select Banjul. Press to ATO, negative return. DPDT is trending to zero. Coming down. Just coming down. 1.7 G's. 
All three engines are stable at 104%. Auxiliary power units all performing well. Discovery's velocity is 8,400 feet per second at a downrange distance of 175 nautical miles. 2.1. Press to Miko. Press to Miko. The press to Miko call signifies that Discovery could make the main engine cutoff target. Discovery, Droop Banjo 109. Droop 109. And that last call means that uh, Discovery could reach the Banjo transatlantic site on one engine at 109%. Hopefully this thing won't come off. Guidance officer confirms that navigation is good. Discovery, single engine banjo 104. Single engine, man two, 104. DPDG look good there. Yeah, let's get zero. Engines are good. Okay. Mark on a two. Holy cow, we're smoking. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could see that. Booster officer reports, so uh, all three engines stable. Houston, single engine press, 104. Single engine press, 104. How many switches you think you'd be throwing now? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Coming up on throttling. I agree. The single engine press call means that uh, Discovery could make it to main engine cutoff targets on one engine at 104%. Discovery's velocity now 16,000 feet per second. At an altitude of 58 nautical miles. Downrange 435 nautical miles. PSLPH, we expect it. Discover Houston, concur. No action on fuel cell pH. No action is required. No impact on that uh, pH message. That uh, message was expected during this phase of the launch. Three Gs. Air throttling. Hit it to go. We got it. All right. Are you all ready? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I have to change it. Have to ride, have to ride. <laughs> three engines throttling back now to maintain the 3G limits on the uh, vehicle. Discovery is 580 miles away from Kennedy at an altitude of 56 nautical miles. Yeah, this helmet's heavy. Yeah. Velocity now 19,000 uh, feet per second. You know, with this DSO and these uh, clicks in the G-suit, you sort of get squeezed uh, every which way you can. Yeah. Okay, just real easy, guys. We are standing by for main engine cutoff at uh, 8 minutes 32 seconds, mission elapsed time. 10 seconds, Mach 25. Okay, stand by for some XL here, just bear with it. Stand by. How'd you go? There you go. Miko! That was a Miko. That was a Miko. Miko, that's our Miko. I agree. It's a lot easier at 3G. Oh, much better. Welcome to space, everyone. Hard to believe, isn't it? There it is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Hey, bud. Space up here. At 300,000 feet. <laughs> That's a killer view. Boy, look at that. What an amazing vehicle. Amazing. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> I can't believe I'm here. This is, uh, this is unbelievable. <laughs> That's space. <laughs> oh boy. Good Miko, looks uh, nominal from here. And the booster officer also confirms a, a nominal main engine cutoff.
Looks good. After the shuttle slow down below the speed of sound, the pilot takes manual control for landing. The large delta wings help to provide lift, and the elevons and the body flap at the rear help to control pitch and roll. The large rotor is used for both yaw control, as well as opening in both directions at once to produce drag and act as an air brake. Ayon sa bandang huli ang pilot talaga magkakontrol mano-mano. The orbital maneuvering system uses bipropellant fuel to adjust shuttle's orbit once it reaches space. This fuel uses two chemicals that are mixed, ignite simultaneously, and produce stress. This same fuel composition is used for the reaction control system, which controls the shuttle's orientation as well as providing bi-maneuvering control for docking. Ang galing pag pinaghalo ang dalawang chemicals, ganun palang reaction. The remote manipulator system is an erroneous robotic arm, also known as the Canada arm. It is used to manipulate the shuttle's payload, as well as capture and release shuttles from maintenance missions. For out-of-reach components, a large boom is also used to extend its possible reach. The arm has various adapters, including cameras, docking arrays, and even foot grips for astronauts to stand on. Ayon sa bandang gilid, makikita natin ang mga hawakan. The shuttle's main engines are a cluster of three Rakdyne RS-25 engines fueled via an external tank during takeoff. These engines combine hydrogen and oxygen to create explosive force, producing over 5 megadeutons of thrust combined with a solid rocket booster at ignition. These engines help get a shuttle up to orbital speed. Kaya pala ang lakas talaga nito. A total of six shuttles were built, including the test vehicle Enterprise. The remaining shuttles, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour, are located at the Smithsonian, the Kennedy Space Center, and California Science Center, respectively. The Enterprise is located at the Interpret Museum in New York. Ayon, pwede natin bisitahin ang mga shuttles na ito. The airlock has several possible configurations depending on what the shuttle's mission is. The airlock itself can be placed either inside or outside the mid deck and can also be attached to a tunnel adapter to allow for docking with space stations or connection to space modules. Ang setup nito ay depende kung anong klaseng mission nila.
The Space Shuttle was primarily a method of delivering payloads to orbit. Aside from the famous examples like Hubble and Space Lab, the shuttle also delivered the Galileo probe and Chandra X-ray Observatory, as well as 80% of the mass of the International Space Station into orbit. Ito yung pamamaraan kung paano hindi binalhin ang payload sa orbit. The airlock has several possible configurations depending on what this shuttle's mission is. The airlock itself can be placed either inside or outside the mid deck and can also be attached to a tunnel adapter to allow for docking with space stations or connection to space modules. Ang setup nito ay depende kung anong klaseng mission nila. The waste collection system acts as the toilet aboard a space shuttle. It uses a sophisticated suction system as well as seat belts to ensure the astronauts are able to complete their ablutions in peace. Waste is stored in the tank under the floor, while liquids are periodically ejected into space. Well, hindi kasama yung mga solid, mga liquid lang ang pwedeng ilag-lag doon. The hatch is the main entry and exit points for astronauts and crew. Once the airlock has been installed before mission, the flight deck also contains emergency escape panels in the roof in the event that the hatch becomes stuck. Ito yung daanan talaga nila or the main door. The galley is used for food preparation and contains cleaning materials, an oven, and hot and cold water dispensers. Shuttle astronauts are supplied with a wide variety of food each mission, including barbecue beef, shortbread cookies, turkey tetrazzini, and granola bars. Ito na yung kusina nila. The luggers and the mid-deck are designed to be entirely modular and were typically used for storing both personal and mission-critical effects. Examples of these include food, spare steel toe scrubbers, as well as experiments, commemorative coins, action figures, photographs, cameras, and survival equipment. Behind the luggers themselves is much of the avionics package, the computer that helps shuttle fly. It's the storage area nila. Sleeping space is a relatively simple affair. Astronauts simply zip and toss up the bags and fall asleep. Commander Chris Hadfield set up sleeping space without gravity, of course. You don't need anything to hold you up. You just completely relax. You don't even need a pillow. In space, you don't even need to hold your head up. So you can just relax every muscle in your body. Ayun, hindi kailangan ng una, pikit ka na lang. The advanced crew escape suit is worn by astronauts during lunch and landing. It is a full pressure suit connected directly to the shuttle's air supply. The helmet is both clear visor and black sunshade to reduce glare during lunch and landing. Its backpack contains a full survival kit 
to help the astronauts if they become stranded after landing. This includes a life raft and layers. Isusot lang nila ito sa tuwing papunta at pabali. The shuttle is controlled via fly-by-wire system, meaning the pilots control air and mechanically moving control surfaces. Instead, computers aid in translating the pilot's movement of the joysticks, levers, and pedals into electronic signals to move motors and adjust the rotors, flaps, and elevators, with a few notable exceptions. This shuttle's landing was almost entirely computer-controlled, with the exceptions of the last few minutes before touchdown, where the pilot took a full manual control. Ganon pa rin bago mag-landing ang pilot talaga magkocontrol manually. The mission station has screens and controls for monitoring the overall mission, as well as payload-specific data. The radar shown here helps the crew to monitor the shuttle subsystems throughout the mission. Dito nila minomonitor lahat what are the things going on inside the system. The payload station contains controls for the payload's electronics, as well as mission-specific control interfaces. This panel would often swap out for each mission, depending on the shuttle's payload. It yung nagkocontrol sa may kakabit na dala nilang payload electronics. The station on the left is used to control the orbiter during rendezvous and docking. The pilot uses the reaction control system to fire a small burst of reaction engines to control the shuttle's reaction of movement while in orbit. The station on the right is for payload manipulations. The controls for the cannon arm are found here. Dito yung controls sa ng shuttle at bawat ngalaw nito.
Don't forget this maneuver. You're going to feel in the flare on the gear. Don't worry. Your own energy is broken. Feel good. Been here before. Done this a lot. Gear. Gear is coming. Gear down. Here's the maneuver. Ready? Ready.
Still stop. Good landing. I should have brought speed broke more. We rolled too far, but it was detailing so good. You're okay, bud. You did a great job. You greased it on. Yeah. Guys, those are open. Okay. We're slowly ramping down. Yeah, it's been fluctuating a little. Give him a minute here. What do we got left here? Should be good. Everybody remember to pull your G-suit clips before uh, getting up. Okay. Hands up, keyboard, please. Oh, thanks. Radar, Roger, radar radar two is good. Radar one is good. Thank you. Three thousand. Speed break twenty five. Speed yeah. break. Yeah. One thousand. Five hundred. Four hundred.
stop. Good landing. I should have broke speed broke more. We yeah. rolled too far, but it was deselling so good. You're okay, bud. You did a great job. Greased it on. Yeah. Hey, brake isos are open. Okay. We're slowly ramping down. Yeah, it's been fluctuating a little. Give him a minute here. Where do we got left here? Should be good. Everybody remember to pull your G-suit clips before uh, getting up. Okay. Hands off the keyboard, please. Oh, thanks. Thank you. 